Today I want to show you a preview of our widgets and themes project. As you know, we've been very hard at work over the last year refactoring the source base for live code. This, I think, is one of the most exciting projects that we are now able to do as a result of all of that refactoring work. What I'm going to show you today is just a very rough preview of what we've got, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about the capabilities that we're going to be adding and the things that you're going to be able to do with this project in the very near future. Let's take a look. Here we have a specially modified version of live code that contains the first implementation of our widgets architecture. It's not a lot to look at at the moment. You can see that we have a PDF here on the screen and we're able to navigate to go forwards and we're able to navigate to go back. What we're doing here is we're hooking into the OS native PDF rendering. But what's really exciting and really impressive about this is that there isn't a single line of C code in sight. We're using a slightly lower level version of live code itself to give direct access to the OS. That means that you don't have to leave live code. You don't need to install or use a different C compiler. You can simply wrap any API that you might want to have access to. We'll be providing full access to the operating system, to any of the new capabilities that might come out and full access to be able to wrap any other third-party library again without ever having to leave live code. So how is this working on a script level? What do we have to do to make this work? Well, what we're doing here is we're loading an extension, which is the specially modified lower level version of live code. This is currently just sitting in a text file on our desktop. And then we're creating a widget called test and we're setting the kind of that widget to a PDF view. And that's been defined in this script file. Then next up, what we're doing is we're setting the file name of the widget to a PDF that we've specified, and we're setting the rectangle. Then to navigate forwards and backwards, we've got a next button here, which is setting the current page of the widget. So I can go next. And we have a previous button here, which is setting the current page to go previous. Now, when this widgets architecture is finished, we'll have a modified version of the tools palette. So you'll be able to install widgets onto the tools palette and just drag them out directly. Another thing to notice is that this is a proper control and that it layers perfectly with the other live code objects. So I can move my previous button over it and I can even do things like set graphic effects or set the blend level of the widget and that all works perfectly. So how does it work? What does this lower level version of live code look like? Now bear in mind that things may change a little bit over time, but I can show you some of how this PDF object has been implemented. This is us setting up the object, and you can see that I'm starting out by calling uh, widget com.runrev.pdf view, which is defining the PDF view. And we're also asking it to use another file which contains some supporting code that we've written. Next, we define the properties that you'll be able to get and set on this object. So property number of pages links to get number of pages, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Property file name, we have the ability to both get and set the file name. And the current page property, which we also saw a moment ago, again, you can get and set the current page. And it's defined here which function calls get called whenever you do any of those things. So we start out on open and we set up a few variables to keep track of the file name and to keep track of the current page. Now the main method inside uh, most widgets, or certainly the widgets that are going to be drawing into your stack, is this paint method. And that's called when it comes time for live code to draw things onto the screen. And we have this idea of a canvas, which is the rect within which your object sits. So this is a little bit more complicated than some existing live code scripts, but hopefully you'll be able to follow it. We're going ahead and calling the color space create device function, which is defined in our widget uh, code itself. Then we're creating a context, and then we're using the uh, document page to find out what page we're on. We're drawing that context, and then finally, we're putting that data directly into the canvas and drawing it onto the screen. And this is what our number of pages function looks like when you choose to call the number of pages. So it goes out and it calls this function that's defined in our widget code, 
which gives us the total number of pages. And here we have an example of the lower level version of LiveCode itself. Very similar to LiveCode, we try to keep it as close as possible. However, at this level, you do have access to things like pointers and you can do different types of variable typing, which you need to be able to do in order to access code that's been written in other lower level languages. So here we're defining a CF object, we're defining that we return an integer, and then a little bit of magic. This is where we're binding to the function call inside the core graphics framework and we're specifying that we're doing that binding and we're specifying that we're using C to do it. And that is essentially all you need to do to get back the number of pages in your PDF document. And to wrap the entire PDF, you just need to produce a handful of these methods. In fact, it's not a huge amount of code at all to be able to do it. So how does this sit within the current architecture? Well, at the moment, we have the situation where user stacks live in a live code land. They use the live code code in order to operate. And then below that, we have externals, which communicate both with your stacks and with live code itself. And those are written in C code. And then we have live code, which is written in C code itself. And what's going to change is that the widgets and externals sit at the same level of the engine. So your widgets are going to be able to access all of the nicely, neatly modularized functionality that we've been working on creating within the live code engine directly. And they're also going to be able to communicate with user stacks. And because they're on the same level as the engine itself, they're not in the message path. The message path sits up in that space where the user stacks are. So you, you, you get a mouse up message and it travels from button to card to stack, etc. Widgets are completely outside that. And what that means is that they don't break whenever you do things like lock messages. So for example, if I go in here and I go into my uh, next button here, which is setting the current page, and I do lock messages, if I was then to apply this script and run it, it won't block setting the current page. It's as if the current page is an engine property in the same way that the rect or the location or the name of that object is an engine property. So my widget will never fall over. I'm always going to get the paint method. I'm always going to get the methods that I need to change what I'm displaying within the widget. And that's really, really important because it'll make widgets really robust. And a widget can contain anything, so it doesn't just have to be a very simple PDF. You'll be able to access our graphics library directly and render very complicated controls. So what are we going to be using the widgets architecture for? Well, one of the first things that we're going to do and one of the easiest things that we'll be able to do is to write a shape object using the widgets architecture. And that will allow us to hook into the engine graphics directly using the sub-pixel positioning that's there in the graphics library, but isn't yet exposed directly at the user level with any of the objects that we have. Now, the thing to note when we're operating within the engine is that if we write a shape object using a widget, because we're tying directly into the engine functions instead of tying into the OS, it will be completely cross-platform. So the same shape object will be written once and it will enjoy all of the benefits that live code has. You won't have to change it as you move between different platforms. That's different, of course, when you're hooking directly into the OS. At that stage, you will need to use different calls on each of the different platforms. But again, your widget will be able to be written multi-platform and in the same way that you can currently choose which platform uh, you're running on and choose different code to run, you'll be able to do the same in a widget. We're using it to write new native theme controls to replace all of our existing objects, starting out with the basics, a button that looks perfect on all of the platforms, including the mobile platforms, and hooks into the OS automatically wherever it's appropriate to draw the various native elements that make these objects look really good. We'll be writing the new networking layer inside this layer as well, and also the database layer in this uh, level as well. We want to get to a stage where live code is mostly written in itself. And this is one of the reasons why it'll be much quicker for us to deliver the remaining stretch goals that we have left, because most of them now will get written within this new layer. It's taken us a very long time to get this layer, and the layer itself, the widgets architecture, is of course written in C. But now that we have it and we're starting to refine it, 
it's going to be much quicker to deliver some of these goals because it's much, much faster to write things in live code, even a lower level version of live code, than it is to write all of these things in C. And what will you be able to do with it? Well, you could, for example, choose to go out onto iOS and wrap HealthKit, probably only a few lines of code to go and do that. The same with audio recording, for example, on Android, you'd be able to go and just wrap that very, very easily. In fact, you'll be able to wrap pretty much any third party library or third or OS API out there to do just about anything you like without ever having to go outside the live code language. And you'll also be able to access the new modular engine that we spent all of this time building directly. So you'll be able to hook into the various different pieces of functionality we have there, the sockets library, the graphics library, and so on and so forth. The idea is that the engine is this core kernel and all of the functionality will be all of these different modules that sit on top. And of course, once you've gone to the trouble of wrapping a given uh, API call or library, you'll be able to share that really easily with anybody in the community. And we hope that the lower level version of LifeCode is going to be accessible enough that maybe 10% of our community are going to feel really comfortable with it, within it and are going to be the ones that produce lots of extensions and components. And that's a lot better than the current uh, percentage, probably a small fraction of 1% who can go out and produce the really complicated externals that you currently have to write to extend the platform. So having said all of that, how will you be able to edit widgets? This is a prototype of the live code widget editor. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to create widgets, to edit them, to write documentation for them, and to test them and to share them. Now this widget editor is a fairly early version, so it will be subject to change. But already you can see we have the code for the PDF widget that I showed you earlier. And if I open up the sidebar here, we have a pane for putting in tests and preview. Uh, we have a, an option to do localization, so you'll be able to put in strings to use in different languages. And we have our inline documentation editor. And if I want to add documentation, let's say I want to document the set current page uh, function that we looked at earlier. So I just put in uh, star LC, and then I can say use, use the current page to set the page being displayed. And then I could do parameter page number and put in brackets number for that so that users know that they have to enter a number. So it's fairly basic at the moment, but it should make it easy for you to start uh, building widgets and trying them out. Well, that's it for the preview of this prototype today. We'll have more at the conference. We're hoping to have some things that we can actually share and you can actually start to try out uh, as you get to RunRev Live. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.